to the show where I talk about cannabis legalization, the benefits of cannabis, and just why cannabis should be allowed in our beautiful world. And I dare I say was created by God himself, who I am a strict believer and follower of. Of. I uh, show him uh, my appreciation and love and adoration at Antioch Church every Sunday, 11 a.m. Join me if you'd like. I believe he created cannabis for us to use as we see fit. And so I champion the advocation of cannabis to be a little more free and less manipulated by the man. So we'll talk about it at 420. We open a big fat bag of cannabis news. This Thursday's no different. So I'm excited to talk to you. We've got a couple uh ads we can play from the the new approach north dakota we've got some haters that are uh, posting up uh stinking sam is at it again so we'll try to poke a couple holes in those idiots and uh they've gotten behind a group called healthy and productive north dakota and they're out to uh, ruin the chances of measure two getting through so we need to make sure that we vote yes on measure two in november november 8th i believe and tell your friends and if they've got any sort of uh, weird like oh it's going to hurt the children make sure you do your research and you've got some info to combat that because it's crap and they're like i said i i look i do a show on cannabis i i find the news that's ugly and pretty when it comes to pro cannabis and i just if i was overran with negative articles that proved cannabis was bad i mean just my relationship with god alone i would have to abandon ship and stop promoting something that i just i can't prove uh is an evil but uh i've a you i've been a utilizer of cannabis medically and even recreationally before i chose to be you know a stricter christian so i i kind of eliminated the recreational part of it but uh, that doesn't mean uh you know when, when i say recreational i mean do every uh, hour or so you know, the four foot bong, the thousand milligrams, you know what I mean? Uh, more for fun. However, now it just uh, keeps my ship afloat. And so there's a lot less need, but it's still a requirement for Wilson to get in here every Thursday and give you a show called Can I Talk and D with Wilson. And again, at 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And again, we've got a couple articles we'll talk about. I'll play them uh, that... Uh, Stinking new approach North Dakota here in the state of North Dakota have pushed and they're new. So I haven't even listened to them. So we will check them, check them out at 420. Again, measure two. That's the measure you're going to be able to vote on if you're a North Dakota resident. If you're South Dakota, it's going to be measure 27. And uh, I'm behind you guys in South Dakota. I'm praying for you. I'm hoping it's going to work out. Uh, Again, so we've got South Dakota's got a legalization measure on the ballot. North Dakota measure two, and I believe there's a few other ones, and some of them are also conservative, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy, blackcottagealchemy.com, Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. Body butter is their staple. It's what I tell you to take care of. And you can come downtown to Tochi Products and get it as well. It's made with kosher full-spectrum CBD, North Dakota-grown hemp seed oil, 1,600 megs of CBD, mango butter, shea butter, cocoa butter, turmeric, which every grandma, bless their hearts, will tell you turmeric is the business. So believe your grandma, will you? Anyway, it's good for neuropathy, pain, inflammation, eczema, neck and uh, neck and hair. And I forgot to read the first part. Otherwise, it sounds weird. Hydration. Feet, toe, and foot fungus tattoo aftercare. Get you some of this. Thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring Canada again. D with Wilson. Now, oh, sh- shout out, rest in peace, Loretta Lynn. That's a sad passing. I just thought of it. She was really old, so it is what it is. Canada Talk and D with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here. We're going to talk about cannabis. Uh, I'll wait till the next uh, musical segment, and then we'll talk about where you can get your signs. Uh, the cool Measure 2 signs are available and out there. You can also pick up merch to uh, promote the uh, to promote the thing. I don't know that I can necessarily do that, so I'll just say go to the website. But there are Measure sign, Measure 2 signs. I know Orange Records has Measure 2 signs. I was just in there today, so I can assure you they're there. We're going to play a little music from Polyphia. This is Saucy on 95.9. 
Oh, man, Polyphia, saucy. That's kind of prog rocky, kind of battles, if you're into battles. 95.9 KRFF. Moorhead Fargo, RadioFreeFargo.org. That's what you're listening to. You're listening to specifically Can I Talk ND with Wilson. I'm Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here at 4 o'clock. Count them. 1, 2, 3, 4. 420 open, a big fat bag of cannabis news, and I can assure you that's going to happen. We're, uh, as we get closer to November 8th and we get to vote on Measure 2 here in the state of North Dakota, uh, I'm going to focus as much energy as I can on specific news around that and promoting it because, uh, well, I'm pro-cannabis, I'm pro-Measure 2. However, I'm anti-Number 2. I'm not, not as big a fan as Number 2, as Measure 2 as I am, but... You know, they're both pretty fun. They're both pretty fun. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to mention this. So anyway, if you're wondering, well, what's new approach North Dakota? Measure two is the cannabis legalization measure. You're going to be able to have an ounce on you at any given time without any persecution from the coppers, from the piggies, from the pork eaters. I don't know, making stuff up. Because that's what I do. I got an hour to make stuff up. I, I'm not making everything up. I didn't want you to believe that. Everything I'm telling you is the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me goof. All right. But anyway, if you didn't hear this information and you lived in Fargo and Biz and maybe Dickinson and Williston, I'm not sure when they got there, but New Approach North Dakota, and you're going to be able to grow three plants. It's going to be regulated. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, and again, if you want to utilize it medically, uh, chances are you're not going to be able to fit into the program required here in the state of North Dakota, or you might not be able to afford it. So don't don't see this recreationally as just lounge lizards, smashing windows, shooting out the lights, listening to, you know, Brooks and Dunn. You know what I mean? It's not it's not the reckless measure where medical is the safe and beneficial to ourselves, whereas the recreational one is just, you know, hell and dancing. It's just going to be an easier way to get it medically. Because again, I champion the benefits of cannabis. There's so many different kinds and so so many different things that you could use instead of, well, I mean, just Tylenol PM, for example. You could get rid of Tylenol PM and use an indica. It's natural. There won't be any uh, junk in it. And you don't have to worry about paying, you know, some pharmaceutical billionaire, you know. And chances are you could probably grow it and do it yourself. Get yourself a little machine and do it yourself. But anyway, New Approach North Dakota are moving through the state this week and they're dropping off yard signs. So if you want a yard sign and you're in these particular towns, now I want to mention in Fargo, as as long as supplies last, at least at East Skate Orange Records. No, East Sigs TH Skate. THC Skates? That that's, uh, sounds like a good name. But anyway, the skates, uh, the skate store downtown next to Orange Records, Orange Records, and then East Sigs has them in North Dakota, in Fargo specifically. Now, uh, they're in Bismarck somewhere. You're going to have to go to probably, let's see here. You can contact them by calling or texting 701-997-2377 or emailing them at info at newapproachnorthdakota.org and find out exactly where they are today, Thursday, October 6th, Dickinson and Williston. Friday, that's tomorrow. Minot, Saturday the 8th, Grand Forks. So you'll want to make sure uh, they're partnering with local businesses. So you'll want to make sure you find out where uh, where you are. So, again, get, uh, get a hold of them and uh, find out if you can get yourself a sign. And they are pretty cool signs. And I do want to say, I've seen an older gentleman in a nicer vehicle heading uh, heading from a place with his new sign. I thought, well, that looks like a normal guy. He doesn't look spacey at all. In fact, he looks a little bit productive. How can he afford that vehicle? As he was stuffing his beautiful Measure 2 sign, legalizing cannabis in the state of North Dakota, into his high-end vehicle. I never said anything to you because I suffer from social anxiety, but I salute you, sir, if you're listening. I seen you yesterday with your beautiful sign. But anyway, can I talk indeed with Wilson? Every Thursday, I get in here at 4 o'clock, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and that's going to happen in a mere, in mere minutes. So uh, stick around for that. Um... Like I said here, I'm going to read this quick. Uh, 
Yesterday, a group called Healthy and Productive North Dakota filed paperwork to form a committee opposing Measure 2. The effort is backed by SAM, a national anti-legalization lobbying organization, basically the enemy, and liars, the lying enemies. They're wasting no time spreading misinformation and fear tactics in their press release. They claim legalization advocates are hell-bent on harming children and undermining public health. And again, show me the proof. How come I can't Google harm to children in Illinois? In some of those horribly impoverished neighborhoods in Chicago, how come how come I can't Google? I can Google fentanyl all stinking day long, and I can get stats all day long on fentanyl. Well, and that's not even legal. Well, it's legal if you you know got to prescribe from a doctor. But I, so I'm hoping that these cats that they're just uh, you know they're motivated by money there seems to me there's always an ulterior motive but these arguments just keep getting lame you know do they just they stop they stop holding water every year states legalize it and you we have reference points we have facts we can use based on these billion dollar markets and we'll talk about Nevada's already hit a billion so come on they're a part of the growing club of billion in revenue so we'll talk about it 420. Kind of talk in D with Wilson. That's what you're locked into at KRWF 95.9. I got brand new Xavier Rudd. We deserve to dream. Man, what a chill song. We deserve to dream. Xavier Rudd, that's brand new off his Journeys album here at KRWF 95.9, Radio Free Fargo. Dot org Programming on KRWF 95.9 LPFM has been underwritten by the 12th Annual Fargo Record Fair. The Fargo Record Fair will take place on Saturday, October 15th from 11 a.m. to 5 at the Fargo Brewing Company located at 610 North University Drive in Fargo. This year, over 45 tables with vinyl records, CDs, 8 tracks, cassettes, posters, t-shirts, music memorabilia, and much more. Search Fargo Record Fair on Facebook for further details. And now, my friends, it's time to get this show to your ear holes. So we're going to play the little intro. Don't you love it? In a month, I will have played this intro for three years. That's right, folks. I said three years. So if you got a medical card, scurry to the freezer, get yourself some of those frozen round things, stick it in that glass cylinder, gurgle, gurgle, friends. We'll see you on the other side of this. Hey, it's Phil from Canaheads. Like this episode? Hit that like button. And if you enjoy the show, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on cannabis news, local and national. Listen live on 95.9 in the Fargo, North Dakota region from 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For our non-Fargo region friends, you can listen on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Canatalk ND with Wilson. Now enjoy the show. Hey guys, how you doing? How's everybody doing? It's 420-ish. It's time to do Can of Talking D with Wilson. I open a big fat bag of cannabis news and that is happening right now. Actually, I already opened it. I lied. Stinking the place up, but you know, it's good. And maybe this time uh, next year, it'll be something good that I grew in my stinking closet. Thanks to you guys for voting yes on Measure 2 here in the state of North Dakota will legalize cannabis and allow us green thumbers to grow up to three plants. And that's, I mean, really awesome, you know, just in a natural sense, you know, to be able to grow something that that has so many interesting things about it. And there's so many different kinds. And I mean, just horticulturally freeing up a plant, you know, to research in your own free time just to play around with. Especially when you feel like you're doing something you're not supposed to. I mean, it's it's like how I felt when I went to my first dispensary. I had a panic attack in the parking lot, you know, because I just I just couldn't I couldn't get past all the indoctrination and the lies and the fear that had been instilled into me. That even though they told me you're free, I st- I wanted to stay in my 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 prison that uh, just dogma had created. You know, so even though they told me it's okay, you can go in there. Nobody's going to bust you. Nobody's going to jump through the windows. It's legal here. You're safe, buddy. I mean, the first time it it didn't go that easy. You know, I I had to hit the CBD pen, breathe deep, you know, think of ponies and whatnot. And then I went into the dispensary. Then it was great in there. It was a good time. They, they, They made me feel easy pretty quick. You know what I'm saying? But anyhow, we need to vote yes on measure two. So make sure you tell your people that it needs to get done November stinking 6th or 8th. I can't remember. I want to say it's November 8th. 
I know it's the third Wednesday or second. I should just stop talking about specifics, but Google stinking when the vote is. I think it's November 8th. Tell your friends and let's get uh, Measure 2 voted in. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. So let's see, what should we talk about first? Uh, to be honest, there wasn't a whole lot of national news in regards to cannabis, even state news. So before I begin talking about new approach North Dakota and voting yes on Measure 2 here in the, you know, the month of November, actually just like about a month away, there uh, we're going to, I'm able to talk about it a little more. So Anyhow, apparently, like I've been uh, just uh, turned on to, and I'm going to talk to you guys about it, there is a group now that's uh, started to uh, be the naysayers. And it's kind of interesting that they showed up this late, because doesn't it seem late? But in the same instance, not to be a devil's advocate, I haven't really seen a big push for Measure 2 either. But again, I don't listen to the radio. I don't, I'm don't. i not on Facebook. I have an Instagram, can of talk ND. I'll post stuff on that if you'd like to follow me there. But all I do is read the Bible and go to church. Oh, and I play Wordle. But otherwise, I don't know what's going on. So maybe they are. You know what I'm saying? And they certainly have got the signs out, but it just seems like a month out. It just seems like a little little late in the game. But, however, I'm just talking. I'm a talking head. But again... Maybe these anti-cannabis people just wait till the end because they don't want to spend the money, you know, being up front. Maybe they feel like they don't have to. They can just come, you know, and do the thing. So uh, so before we get into that, I've got a couple uh, I've got a couple ad spots here that these guys put up. And so wherever you listen to radio. So I'm thinking I can just hit play and here we'll go. Uh, but bear with me. If that isn't the case, we'll figure it out as we go along. It's time for a change and it starts with us. Measure 2 to legalize and regulate marijuana for adults in North Dakota is on the ballot this November. I'm Mark Fries, a criminal law attorney from Fargo. I was raised in Bismarck where I served in the National Guard and as a police officer. I'm voting yes on two. During my five years as a patrol officer with the Bismarck Police Department, I witnessed firsthand the waste of resources arresting and prosecuting people for small amounts of marijuana. Measure 2 allows police to spend more time and resources on more serious and violent crimes. Montana voters passed a similar law in 2020. Now, they're seeing the benefits. Legalization is creating jobs and raising millions in new revenue to invest in drug treatment programs and services for veterans. It's time to take a new, smarter approach in North Dakota. Let's vote yes on two. Paid for by New Approach North Dakota. Mark Free. Man, that uh, had some jams, huh? It kind of like got me stoked about it. And again, I'm going to let it slide that he says marijuana. Everybody knows it's cannabis. Marijuana is a jive term. Came up with the opposition, Mark. The enemies came up with the name marijuana. So let's just try to call it cannabis from here on out. I'm going to let it slide because you otherwise did a very nice ad for Yes on Measure 2. So we got one more here. This is from Scott Brand. This is kind of exciting, isn't it? Here we go. This November, North Dakotans will vote on Measure 2 to legalize marijuana. Oh. I'm Scott Brand, former soldier of the Army National Guard, military veteran, and an attorney from West Fargo. I guess people know I'm a pretty straightforward guy, so I'm letting people know that I'm voting yes on Measure 2. When I returned home from Iraq in 2007, I saw fellow veterans suffering from PTSD and debilitating pain. For many people struggling with serious health issues, marijuana is the only thing that helps. But far too many people who need marijuana for medicinal benefits can't access it in North Dakota. Legalizing regulated adult use of marijuana changes that. As a veteran, I support Measure 2. It'll ensure veterans and other patients can get the relief they deserve. This is a chance to show each other support and compassion. Vote yes on 2 on November 8th. Well, I guess we know it's November 8th now. And that was beautiful by Scott Brand. It was really, really kind of emotional. I, uh, I bought into it. I'm not saying he's lying. I know he's not. But I'm pro-Measure 2. So I'm saying those are good ads. So shout out New Approach North Dakota. I dig it. Now, personally, I prefer the little second one, you know, even keel dude. It's hard not to take them serious, you know. And again, we're going to talk about 
a lot of this more as we uh, get along here. But uh, let's see. So this is from Cannabis Moment. As Canada reimburses medical cannabis for military veterans, the U.S. keeps failing those who serve. And that's another thing, you know, like this, like the Scott's talking about. We put magnets on our bumper, support our troops. We we love using it to get people riled up into our corner. If I can say this, then you'll be in, you know, you'll be into me. But then those same people that you have that magnetic bumper sticker stating you support has suicidal ideations, has nightmares that are horrific. And the only thing that can help him, you don't want him to have. And you use some weird reason for it. And the reasons have just gotten lamer and lamer. I just, again, as a talking head for cannabis legalization and somebody who would welcome an argument, you know, because I see the news every day, every day. I've got all these pages, everything I look at. And for fun, I type statistics of high crime because of cannabis. It just, it isn't happening. Okay. And so anyway, in the last 20 years, they've been working together as allies in Afghanistan and elsewhere. Canada has gone from federally allowing the medical use to legalizing it for all. Uh, They started with 37 clients in 2011, and now they have more than 18,000 in 2021. Now, peep this. Canadian veterans, unlike their U.S. peers, are seeing dropping rates of suicide. Now, why? Why? Seems like a pretty direct correlation, don't you think? I mean, give me a reason why that isn't the case. Canadian veterans who can access cannabis for medical purposes, especially to calm the particular things that have them whacking themselves, is dropping. Now, unlike the U.S., guess what isn't dropping? The suicide rates for sinking bets. Now, if I'd ask a lady with a magnet on her bumper sticker that says, support our troops, is she for the suicide of vets? course not she'd say if i said well how come you don't vote for cannabis oh you're doing it seeing all of a sudden they know more than you know the veteran they support so it's time to just you know stop letting people get into your head do your own research and just don't just trust me and say that veterans need access to cannabis so voting yes on measure two in north dakota just allows access unfettered by somebody else's idea of what they think is you know the right way to do it now we can argue about children all day long but don't get me started about a vet who went over and you know risked his life lost limbs will never have a sleepful uh, you know a fun dream filled night again while you sat here in town eating potato chips with the big fat legs up talking about supporting the troops voting no for medical cannabis and not taking this guy serious when he comes back and goes you know what really helped me if you started stinking voting yes on this access to cannabis so we can be better after serving for you you know so it's almost like you know it's like the backstabbing you know they act like they're for the troops but then they vote no for the thing that'll help and so canada's gotten it right and again how come where are the articles about how horrible cannabis, you know, cannabis has treated Canada? And as we get over on the Facebook page of the uh, the anti cannabis people, uh, they have a, a video up, and there's a bunch of co- uh, comments. And I was looking through them before the show, and uh, I'm going to read a couple because really, the admin is probably going to start deleting all these, you know, because they they'll want it to be anti cannabis in the comments. But there wasn't many, and so we'll. Uh, We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, before we get into that, I'm going to do one more thing. And this is from Gonjapreneur, no, MaryJane.com. USCLA is working on a cannabis breathalyzer that uses THC-powered fuel cells. That's right. They figured out how to convert THC into THCK or something that is derived. You can derive electricity from it. Pretty exciting, isn't it? So anyway. Scientists at USCLA are hard at work on the development of a breathalyzer that could detect the presence of THC in a person's system, which would make things a whole lot easier because the other ones just aren't reliable because they can't tell the person making you pee when you did said THC. And I'm a rhymer. The device relies on oxidizing the THC, which in turn builds an electric current that can give information about how much of the cannabinoid is present. Kind of like sticking your tongue on a nine volt. If it zings you, you high, brother. 
you know, zing. And then it would just be like a little mark, you know, like a little zing. And then it'd blink. And they'd be like, uh, however, uh, do your research. But they have found in recent months that people who utilize cannabis a lot, not some guy who's never smoked it at all and does a four foot bong with a couple white claws, not that guy. But somebody who's who I guess functionally utilizes consumes cannabis for the benefit of his life on a daily basis drives way better than a non-user is driving. So I mean that you can put that to rest. And and there's and just look up normal.com backslash underaged you know consumption in the state of Washington. It all of it has went down. Every age group in children accessing you and consuming of cannabis before they're supposed to legally has gone down several percentage points since like 2000 something so again in north dakota here you're going to hear the negatives and they're going to ultimately tell you about the children but they're not going to be able to show you proof now these anti-cannabis guys, they've got a video that wants you to believe that neighborhoods have gone to pot and are horribly dangerous. And there's just so many other things going on that it's kind of hilarious that they would try to push that on them, you know, and blame it on a plant when, you know, it's pretty lawless out there. You know, you can rob a store under a grand and be cool. So, I mean... I think that's a little more dangerous, you know. Fentanyl, we'll talk about fentanyl. That's going to be a little more dangerous. Let me even find, let me find it here. Now, I know I need to get to measure two here in the state of North Dakota, but other people that don't live in North Dakota also listen to me. So, and I do have a few things to talk about. Um, I wanted to talk about this quick cannabis moment, and I'm not going to read it all. You can read it yourself. But uh, Biden announces mass cannabis pardons and calls for cannabis scheduling review, which the last part sounds pretty exciting. Excuse me. <clears throat> President Joe B. announced on Thursday, Thursday that he's taking dramatic steps to change federal cannabis laws. So he's initiating an administrative review of federal cannabis scheduling. And he also said that he will be granting mass pardons for federal cannabis possessions while calling on governors to do the same at state level. So, first, he's pardoning all prior fed offenses of simple cannabis possession. He says there are thousands of people who were previously convicted of simple possession. His pardon will remove this burden. So, as he said during his campaign, no one should be in jail for just using or possessing cannabis. Today, he's announcing three steps that it's taking to end this failed approach. So... We'll see what goes on. Uh, he's calling on governors to pardon simple whatever. And third, he classifies cannabis at this. Oh, he goes, we classify cannabis at the same level as heroin and more serious than fentanyl. It makes no sense. He's asking Secretary of Becerra and the AG to initiate the process of reviewing how cannabis is scheduled. Um, it's not clear how long the review may take, so it could take forever. Um he had just been asked in August, and they said there was no plan, so they think it's a weird midterm ploy. But if they do it, they do it, bruh. It's possible that the review could ultimately result in a recommendation to remove cannabis from the strictest classification. Uh, Biden wants it to go to number two. I say just take it off. It's, I mean, they used to think tomatoes were poisonous until they realized it was leaching the, uh, the metals that they had the tomato plants on. So take that for what you will. Anyway, that's just that quick note. Kind of talking to you with Wilson every Thursday. 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And this Thursday is no different. If you're in North Dakota, make sure you vote yes on Measure 2. New Approach North Dakota has gotten that on the ballot. Three plants you can grow up to an ounce. There are signs in different businesses in different towns in the state of North Dakota. You can... Uh, they're pretty sharp looking signs, so uh, make sure you get one. I know Orange Records has signs right now. They're yard signs. They've got the metal little dealy. So this is from Gondrepreneur. Nevada sees nearly $1 billion in annual cannabis sales. So, man, in taxable sales is a 4% year over year decrease, however. Oh, well, whatever. Reasons for the drop in sales may include the expiration of COVID-19 restrictions. <laughs> Whatever. 
So anyway, much of the tax revenue, 147 million in total, will go to K to 12 education. So listen to that negative measure tours. The state imposes a 10% excise tax, which totaled 89 million. So now we're oh, and a 15% wholesale tax, which is 63 million. So now where are we at? 147, 60. That's two, almost 300 million dollars in stinking taxes, people. That went to K through 12 education. So, man, oh man, vote yes on measure two, would you, friend? And tell somebody. And find some uh, articles, man. Let, start start turning us pro measure twoers around. I'll vote no on measure two today if you show it. If you show me danger to children, prove danger to children to me today, and I'll vote. Uh, I'll I'll come on here and say boo on measure two. I'll completely turn coat. I don't know if I will. It's not going to be that simple, people. But anyway, let me talk about this, and then we'll wrap up with some more uh, new approach North Dakota. I'm going to talk about some uh, comments on the healthy and productive North Dakota, the haters that are being backed by Sam, Smart Approaches to Cannabis. So it should be SAC, Smart Approaches to SAC. Okay, high times. DEA scoops up $36 million lethal doses of fentanyl off the street. That's nearly the size of the population of California was taken off the streets in a recent federal drug sweep. Now, this isn't about cannabis, but it, it correlates. It correlates. Uh, DEA agents blame the mass production of the majority of these pills on two particular cartels, of course. Uh, let's see. While scooping up cartel manufactured fentanyl sounds like reason to celebrate. Keep in mind that there's only half the problem and as many as 40 percent of opioid overdose, de- over- overdose deaths come straight from the doctor with a prescription. So I guess you can get it. According to the National Safety Council, young Americans are more likely to die of an opioid overdose than a car crash. I mean, show me them stats on cannabis. You know. One Pill Can Kill Initiative, a public awareness campaign to educate the public of the dangers. One pill can kill. Often fentanyl is pressed into blue round pills that appear to be pharmaceutical. Often they're not. In addition, they've been showing up in different colors dubbed rainbow fentanyl. And I think in New York, they just got like, I don't know, they were in like a Lego case. Just nothing but rainbow fentanyl. Even people with a tolerance to oxycodone or hydrocodone might not stand a chance with fentanyl or its analogs called like car fentanyl. Look at the word car in it. So, they also seized 338 weapons and hand grenades from these fentanyl popping crazies. So, anyway, let's talk about this. So, the anti people are coming for the Pro Measure 2s. So, if you want to uh, post a positive cannabis retort, go to their Facebook page, Healthy and Productive North Dakota. That's where I'm at. They posted an article in 2018 uh, against Measure 3. And it's interesting because in the stinking... Oh, oh, maybe this isn't... Oh, so this is stinking... Well, this is stinking old comments. I didn't even read that. It's like from three years ago. See, I was wondering why they were saying measure three. Measure three. But anyway, I guess that isn't relevant. They tried posting that in, you know, 2018, which is, what was that, 2018, 2022, four years ago. So anyway, jump on there and uh, and leave a comment about why you're voting for measure two. So, let's see here. What do we got here? Japanese health official health officials propose provision of law to allow import medical cannabis. Japanese officials released the latest report on an ongoing, re- ongoing review to consider a revision to its cannabis law. So, on September 29th, it recommended an amendment to the country's drug law known as the Cannabis Control Act. Express the need to allow cannabis to be imported and permitted for medical use, which would align it with other countries that already have established medical cannabis programs. Uh, medical cannabis would be regulated like pharmaceuticals and would apply to cannabis products whose safety and efficacy were confirmed under laws governing pharmaceuticals and medical devices. So there you have it. There you have it. I... Uh, I am going to 
find something else here for us to uh, talk about. And uh, we'll wrap this uh, show of Kind of Talking D with Wilson up for another week. I'll be back in here next Thursday. So this is high times. I'm just going to kind of scroll around a little bit. Morocco issues first cannabis production permits. Uh, Amazon, supporter of cannabis reform because they're not uh, testing potential employees anymore, continues to ban grinders. I tried compressed cannabis pucks and they're strange but really good. I don't even know what that means. So, let's see what we got here. I don't know. But, in historic move, Biden announces he will pardon thousands of federal cannabis offenses. So, we'll see uh, We'll see how that goes, huh? We'll see how that goes. But, uh, I'm going to look at one more page here. And then we'll get out of here. Just in, you know, just to make sure I didn't miss anything oh just so you know it's still legal in minnesota to get thc gummies up to 50 milligrams in a bag fyi so man everywhere is talking about the biden pardons offenses kansas lawmakers to review medical cannabis legalization Uh, authorities investigating details surrounding the death of lorna mcmurray you might want to check a read into that uh the young jerks they do a uh, podcast and they delve into this investigation where uh lorna mcmurray claims to have died from inhaling ground keef at the uh at true leave and true leave is i i mean think of them as like you know a major corporation and so there's some gray areas in the reasons they're claiming that she's wrong and because she claims that they they had poor conditions osha came and tested and it tested like it was highly breathable so i recommend looking into it a little more i didn't want to discuss it on today's show per se because i don't have all the information and i don't want to spin it of course but uh check out this uh investigation surrounding this death of lorna mcmurray apparently it was in january young jerks are podcasters and they had the family and they really went in depth and so i uh, i recommend checking that out and uh and there you have it well you've listened to another rabble rousing can of talk and d with your boy wilson i'm happy to have given it to you again vote yes on measure two if you want to measure sign measure two sign downtown orange records skate shop and e-cigs has one uh you can go to new approach north dakota.org and talk to somebody i know they're going to be in uh, uh grand forks and williston and minot here in the next few days dropping off signs so make sure you jump on and ask somebody ask somebody would you programming on KRWF 95.9 lpfm has been underwritten by rough cut social they are fargo's ultimate entertainment destination for axe throwing enjoy fun with family and friends a stellar team building excursion or book your party rough cut comes complete with a full beer wine and soda bar for your perfect time out they're located at 1100 np avenue suite 102 in fargo north dakota check out roughcutsocial.com for more info now it's that time where i play a little toony tune and then come back, use uh, you know, you know, use some more words in the English uh, language, and then I'm out of here. Here's brand new stick figure Paradise 95.9. Well, that was Paradise by Stick Figure, your family friendly reggae band here on Care Double F 95.9, RadioFreeFargo.org. It's Canada Talk ND with Wilson almost out the door. We got stinky already stinky today, people. Stinky. Stinky, and he's ready to get stinky for you guys at 5 o'clock. And then uh, there'll be a couple hours of automation with our boy Fred, spelled with a P, and then Black Ring Ritual wraps up your Thursday here on 95.9. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy, blackcottagealchemy.com, Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook. Body Butter is their claim to fame. It's got 1,600 megs of CBD. It's locally grown, so that's good. It's got sage and rosemary. You can use it for diaper rashes, irritated skin, etc. Tochi Products also has what you need. Again, make sure you tell your friends and you yourself, tell yourself to vote yes on Measure 2, the recreational measure for cannabis, up to three plants you can grow, up to an ounce you can have without the man strapping you to their trunk and bringing you into the hooskow. That's right, I said hooskow. I think I uh, 
my time here is done. I've got stuff to do. So, you guys be good to yourselves. Enjoy this flipping phenomenal weather in North Dakota. It got a little chilly this morning, but we ain't babies, right? We're real dudes. Real dudes and ladies. We can handle it. That's why we have nose hair to handle the winters here in the North Dakota state of Burr. Anyway, educate yourselves on the benefits of cannabis so you can educate others on the benefits of such. I'll be back in next Thursday. Up next is Stinky Arts Music Mart. But right now, it's David Allen, Judgment Day. Peace. Peace.